hey teacher mamas and all other teachers. Um, so back to school 2020, there's so many things that I feel like are really popular that people are doing. And a couple of the things that a lot of people are doing, I chose not to do and it has worked out. And so I want to share with you the five things I didn't do and what I did do instead. If we haven't met yet, my name is Natalie Priester. I teach middle school English learners in the Inland Empire in Southern California. And I'm a mom too little Newton here and my daughter is three and a half this year so far we are teaching from home okay first thing I didn't do was go to my classroom at all I haven't been to my classroom I think I had to go into June and like turn in my keys but other than that, I haven't been to my room at all I have the option to go in and I didn't do it because I thought it would distract me it would waste my time I thought it would start like organizing or messing with materials or something I also thought that like driving to and from would take time away from my family or planning going there I could, would end up talking to people and I mean socializing is fun but I just wanted to get my work done so I had as much time at home with my kids I have the option still to go in and teach there every day or I can teach at home and I am choosing to teach at home a little bit tricky with the kids but it's still um, I just feel like I have more time with them by doing that the second thing I didn't do was to try a new learning management system or all the tools and bells and whistles that my district was encouraging we have the option to use canvas or Google classroom and I've used haiku which is like canvas in the past and I know how to do it but it's been a while and a little rusty and I thought it would take me a bit of time to just figure it all out and I didn't want to spend time learning a tool. I wanted to spend my time figuring out my own classes, systems, content, how my students were going to learn. And I thought the best way to do that would be with using the tool that I'm the most familiar with, which is Google Classroom. And it's hard because sometimes you want to be like the innovative, like the cool person and like do all like the new and up and coming stuff. But no, I'm trying to like slow everything down and just make it as easy as I can for myself and my students because if I'm not stressed out figuring out how to do something, I can really focus on what we need to be doing instead. The third thing I didn't do was purchase a fancy teacher planner or switch teacher planners or jump into a, using a digital planner because I was going to be teaching more online. I didn't change anything up. I kept my planner status simple. I don't buy a fancy teacher planner. I just use a day planner and I use pencil and my gosh, thank goodness I just used pencil because there's been a lot of erasing and I didn't even plan very far in advance. I am just keeping it basic. The fourth thing that it seems like a lot of people are doing that I didn't do was to create a digital check-in form. I can see why people started these because they want to, they're like, well, I can't see my kids and like look at their faces and ask how they're doing every day. And I didn't do it because I've done digital check-in forms in the past. And honestly, I stopped reading them. <laughs> like after a while, it was just this sheet and it was all on a spreadsheet. It was just another tedious thing for me to do. And it became a tedious thing for my students to do. And I felt like it just wasn't really authentic. And so I'm not using those in my class. I didn't use them this week. Instead, I greeted kids as they arrived, as they arrived to class. And then I have been really intentional about like setting up one-on-one -on -one appointments with my students to help them and making sure that they have access to me on things like a Google Hangouts, like a little chat messenger so that we can keep our communication open in a really authentic human to human way. My last thing I didn't do is probably the trendiest teacher 2020 thing <laughs> of all right now. And that is a Bitmoji classroom. I didn't create one. I know. Are you surprised? I thought everybody was just kidding. <laughs> um, I can see why everybody jumped on the Bitmoji classroom bandwagon. Like they wanted something to do. Some people really like decorating their classrooms and it helped them feel like they were still decorating. Um, cause they didn't know what else to do. So they just wanted to do something. And then people were saying it's going to help like build a classroom community and build relationships and help build connections and help kids feel comfortable. But like, it doesn't. <laughs> I think it's a big waste of time. I would rather spend my time working on things like my syllabus and systems and curriculum and content and figure out how I'm really going to connect with my kids. Also, I don't know. I don't start my class making it all about me. Like, I don't do this big thing like, here's who I am and here's my whole life story. No, we just start learning in my class because I feel like that's the most real thing and the kids get to know me over time and they don't care what college I went to. <laughs>
<laughs> they don't. They just want to know if I'm going to be nice to them and help them learn English and treat them fairly and what we're going to do in class a little bit. And that's where I focus instead. So, um, yeah, I didn't do the big budgie. I mean, it looks kind of cool. No, I have one, but I'm not jumping on that train. <laughs> okay. Those have been my five things. I hope that if, um, you're feeling pressured to do some of these things and you're like, man, I don't know if I should or not. I hope that pressure comes off of you because I think a lot of times we know in like our gut what's best for our students and best for our classroom. And I wanna encourage you all like to trust your gut. And just because everybody else is doing something doesn't mean that you have to, especially right now, like keep it simple so that your school year gets off to a relatively peaceful and easy start. Uh, if you like this video, do all the like, subscribe thing. If you're a teacher mama, drop your email below and I'll put you in my newsletter to send you some little teacher mama insiders. I have more videos coming about back to school. As long as he sleeps, I can get them recorded and I will finish this classroom in a closet sometime. I got sawdust in my eye, it's still recovering, but uh, the classroom in a closet makeover, last one is coming too. So take care. I hope all of your back to school goes fabulous. Bye.